So one of the commonly asked question that I get from audiences and from people I talk to about the microbiome is, how stable is it? Is it really that once it's set up early in life that there's no way we can change it or it changes uh, by itself? The microbiome shows a phenomenon um, which is in the form of oscillations, and they're fairly significant, um, both on a short time scale, so within um, a day, so-called diurnal variations, um, but also on a longer time scale that show a strong seasonal variation, so for example, from winter time to summertime. Both of these um, Lines of evidence now suggest there is an oscillation of the, the microbes and that a disturbance of that rhythm um, may not be good for our health. So the first one from uh, Eran Elinov's group um, at the Weizmann Institute in uh, Tel Aviv, Israel. Um, they basically start out with um, the realization that all domains of life feature diverse molecular clock machineries that synchronize physiological processes to diurnal environmental fluctuations. So that means that we have molecules um, in different parts of, um, of our cells in the body with a master clock in the, in the brain um, that synchronize the, um, the functions of the body with major changes in our environment and one major change that all human beings on earth uh, are exposed to are diurnal variations is the night day um, rhythm every life form has adapted to that fundamental rhythm so the authors show that the intestinal microbiota in both mice and humans exhibit diurnal oscillations variations that are influenced by feeding rhythms leading to time specific compositional and functional profiles over the course of a day. So this means that both the, the microbial composition, who is there, which players are there, and their function varies um, over a 24-hour period. And importantly, it's the food intake that um, is the pacemaker that drives the microbial uh, oscillations. An ablation of the host molecular clock in animals uh, or the induction of a desynchronization uh, in humans, um, the form of jet lag or shift work, that um, they lead to aberrant microbiota, their own fluctuations, and dysbiosis means a compromised state, an abnormal state of the microbiome, um, and that th these changes are driven by the impaired feeding rhythmicity. Consequently, they conclude that jet lag induced dysbiosis promotes glucose intolerance and obesity that are transferable um, to, to mice that don't have their own microbiome, so-called germ-free mice. Um, and these same changes that happen in the individual that has uh, undergone these desynchronizations, the same changes can be observed now in these mice that just got the uh, fecal material with the microbes transferred uh, into their own gut, even though they by themselves um, had a normal um, day-night uh, rhythm. Now, why would this have an importance for uh, glucose intolerance and obesity? Um, well, previous work from the same group and from others have shown that the gut microbial composition, the metabolites that produce, have an important role in the amount of glucose being absorbed and how glucose is processed um, on insulin secretion in the, in the body. So a disturbance of our normal microbial composition um, will have consequences on an important function of our metabolic health. So these findings provide clear evidence that alterations of our diurnal rhythm um, by compromised sleep patterns as experienced by uh, shift workers or people frequently traveling across different time zones um, has a profound effect on our microbial architecture, the, the players who are there, and also their function and that the metabolism that they produce feedback on us, on their host, um, in terms of metabolic um, uh, balance. These findings clearly demonstrate a very important role um, of gut microbial function in this link between 
a good night's sleep and um, optimal health. And this time it's the group of Eugene Chang at the University of Chicago published a paper in uh, Cell, Host and Microbe in 2015. Start out with the background that circadian clocks and metabolism are inextricably intertwined where central and hepatic circadian clocks coordinate metabolic events in response to light, dark and sleep-wake cycles. So in their studies they reveal an additional key element involved in maintaining host circadian rhythms, namely the gut microbiome. So this really talks about, this paper talks about the, um, the role that the gut microbiome has on, um, on the host um, and on diurnal processes signaling um, and oscillations in the, in, uh, in the host. Despite persistence of light dark signals, mice without their own gut microbiome, so-called germ-free mice, when they're fed low or high fat diets, exhibit markedly impaired central and hepatic circadian clock gene expression and do not gain weight compared to conventionally raised counterparts. So this is intriguing. So the effect of a high fat diet on, um, on the circadian rhythm of, of the host is not seen in animals that don't have their own microbiome um, really proving the fact that these microorganisms play an important role and also that the, the kind of food that we eat, um, in this case so that the mice ate, namely the high fat diet has um, influences the microbiome in a way that is de detrimental to, um, to our brain and hepatic um, pacemaker activities. So when they examined the gut microbiota in conventionally raised mice uh, they showed differential diurnal variations in microbial structure and function depending on dietary composition. They also found that specific microbial metabolites induced under low or high fat feeding, particularly short chain fatty acids, directly modulate the circadian clock gene expression within the liver. This is even more remarkable. So these short chain fatty acids that our microbes produce um, when they metabolize um, food that we as humans could not digest completely, mainly complex carbohydrates from plants, that these short-chain fatty acids, amongst the many functions that they have in our body, that they can also influence the gene expression of molecules that are essential for these circadian clocks. So they dysregulate the entire system that normally, for example, in our liver produces a diurnal rhythm. So they conclude that their results underscore the ability of microbial-derived metabolites to regulate or modify central antipatic circadian rhythm and host metabolic function, um, the latter following intake of a westernized diet. So amongst the many negative things that have been identified now with a focus on the microbiome that are associated with the westernized diet, which is essentially a diet high in um, fat and sugar and low in plant-based complex carbohydrates. Um, amongst the many negative effects that this kind of diet has on us um, is a direct uh, influence or disruption of the, our circadian rhythms, which play such an important role in, um, in our metabolism and our processing of um, sugar um, and and disruption in the system have been shown previously to play a major role in um, metabolic diseases, metabolic syndrome, um, and uh, type 2 diabetes.